Every year, 6% of Bahamian children are born with a heart defect. We at Cable 12. And the NASA Guardian decided, decided to lend a helping hand in creating more, more awareness, awareness to the cause of saving little hearts. One surgery can cost up to $250,000. We at Cable 12. And the NASA Guardian hear their cry. We are asking you to make a donation to these efforts. Embrace the opportunity. And save a little heart. It's Thursday, February 28, 2013, and this is MB12. Coming up tonight in news, a freak accident leaves a man dead at Lyndon Pinling International Airport this morning. How prepared is BTC for a competition in the market? The National Security Minister reveals how much more money government needs to implement a CCTV program on New Providence. Financial experts say government should launch a public education program before introducing value-added tax and how much it will cost the Defence Force to upgrade its fleet and infrastructure. We have those stories and much more coming up tonight. I'm Christina McNeil and your MB12 starts right now. Joining us, police and airport officials are investigating the circumstances surrounding what led to a man being killed when a plane fell on him during a routine inspection at Lyndon Pinling International Airport today. Celeste Nixon was on the scene shortly after the incident and has more in this report. A freak accident during a routine plane inspection has claimed the life of a man believed to be a U.S. citizen after the landing gear collapsed, crushing him to death. According to Assistant Police Commissioner Yulin Hanna, at around 9.45 this morning, police discovered the body of a Caucasian man in his early 40s, believed to be from Florida, pinned beneath the plane. Hanna, who did not want to identify the victim until his next of kin was notified, told the media the man was working on the 19-seater plane when the left landing gear malfunctioned, causing him to be crushed beneath the left side of the aircraft. They went to the aircraft and they were working on the left side of this aircraft when it is believed that the left landing gear collapsed, pinning, pinning this individual to the bottom. Uh, sometime thereafter, a local nurse from the Princess Margaret Hospital was attached here at the airport examined the body and pronounced the individual uh, dead. There was some injury to the right side of the head in the area of the air and some injury also to the top of the head. But um, other than that, everything appears to be intact. Hannah said the plane is privately owned and was being leased to a company from Grand Bahama. The plane was in New Providence today for a regular inspection. He said it is unclear what caused the landing gear to collapse. Speaking with MB12, an eyewitness said the victim borrowed equipment from a local airline, following which an employee of the company assisted him with the plane. The source said there was no jack supporting the plane when the landing gear malfunctioned. The eyewitness was clearly distraught by what had occurred. Hannah said any disruptions at LPIA were limited and all necessary measures were taken to ensure the scene was secured and that the body was not visible to passengers on other flights. There were any any disruptions, it would have been minuscule. I can also say too that we've taken every step and every effort to use tarpaulin to secure the area so that inbound aircraft are not, persons are not likely to see uh, this person who is in, in the condition he is in. Extending condolences to the family, Hannah said active investigations into the matter continue. Reporting for MB12, I'm Celeste Nixon. Well, the Bahamas Telecommunications Company's monopoly on mobile service doesn't end for another year. However, there's already been speculation on how the company would stack up against regional competitors like Digicel. Well, BTC CEO has asserted that they are more than capable of giving Digicel a good fight. Fonique Toot reports. When the country's mobile phone market opens up in April 2014, CEO of the Bahamas Telecommunications Company Jeff Houston says they fully intend to give telecoms giant Digicel or any other entrant a run for its money. 
BTC currently has a monopoly on the cellular market. However, its regional competitor, Digicel, has reportedly made an application to industry regulator IRCA to provide broadband service. In fact, former Jamaican Prime Minister and Digicel representative PJ Patterson presented business proposals to Prime Minister Christie last year. Can we compete with Digicel? I'm absolutely convinced we can compete with Digicel. Are we going to be in a good position to do it? When, when is, is Digicel going to be the, the uh, new entrant? Don't know. They might not be. There might be somebody else. That's the process that needs to be going through, gone through by IRCA with, with, with government. But my, I am absolutely convinced with my, my Bahamian colleagues here today in BTC that we will give anyone a good fight in BTC. Houston was addressing members of the Advanced Toastmasters Club of the Bahamas. He noted that cable and wireless communications, which bought 51 percent of BTC shares in 2011, is already competing with Digicel in 13 or 14 different markets. And we're market leader in 10 out of those 14. And we've been competing with Digicel now for 12 years. So we as keeping a wireless or line, we're, I mean, all our markets all over the world are competitive. Um, this is, and from a mobile perspective, I think this is the only one where we don't have competition. However, he admits BTC still has a lot more work to do ahead of complete market liberalization. Following the launch of the company's 4G network, cellular customers complained for months about frequent dropped calls and other service disruptions. Erica even launched an investigation after receiving many complaints. We still have issues to deal with and to fix up on our service. We still have more to do on our pricing. We still got more to do on our distribution. We still got more to do on our, our kind of general way of doing business. So I would say today we are probably 30 to 40 percent through that journey, but we've got a lot to do. We've got a lot to do in a very short space of time. 93 percent of voice calls on BTC's mobile network are carried on the 2G network. The drop call rate is said to be 0.6 percent, which Houston says puts that network in the top 10 worldwide. The remaining 7 percent is carried on 4G network, which he admits is not quite performing as well as he'd like. Houston says no mobile phone network anywhere in the world will ever eliminate dropped calls. However, BTC's goal is to minimize them. Reporting for MB12, I'm Vonik Toot. And the government has set an aggressive timeline to roll out a value-added tax or VAT system in the Bahamas. But before a new tax regime can be introduced, financial analysts say government also needs to embark upon a comprehensive education program to ensure that businesses and individuals are well informed about the coming changes. Although government appears to be well-versed on a VAT system and what it would mean for the country as it has been on the table for some time now, chartered accountant Pedro Delaney says a public education program is critical to introducing a new tax regime. The government obviously has a very good understanding of the taxation because it has been under review for, for many years. But it's important for the businesses and the consumers at large to understand what it means to now be paying a VAT tax and for the businesses to establish and put in place the requisite systems to ensure that the VAT tax can be uh, levied appropriately and then accounted for, remitted to the government and then to also have the, the audit trail should the government decide at some point that they wish to verify what has been remitted to them. VAT is a consumption-based tax which is added to the purchase price of goods and services. Noting that the white paper published on the subject is easy to read, Delaney says it is not comprehensive and he would like to see more details. Delaney and senior vice president at CFAL Kevin Burrows appeared on the Guardian radio talk show Daryl Miller Live earlier this week discussing the possible changes that could come into effect if VAT is introduced in 2014. Burrow says there are several misconceptions when it comes to VAT, one of them being that it will be an additional tax burden. There's a lot of confusion about VAT and VAT being an extra tax on top of what they're already paying. I think the average person needs to realize that, you know, this is not the case. They are going to reduce the existing, you know, the, the customs duties, the excise taxes. In, in to compensate you for the fact that now you have this extra 15% VAT on top of it. And really what you should see is that, the, you know, we believe the price level will actually go down a bit 
because you're able to reduce your customs duties by more than just the 15 percent. There has also been concern that VAT may place an unfair burden on lower income consumers. However, Delaney says VAT would tax those who go out and purchase goods and services to meet their basic needs. He says those who have more disposable income will bear a smaller portion of the tax in comparison to their level of income. Delaney says many countries have both an income tax and a VAT. He feels there is still an opportunity to have a discussion about what types of taxes are appropriate for the Bahamas.